Okay guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that Ed doesn't even know about yet. So we have been looking for a green anaconda for quite some time now because we want one on display in a huge enclosure at our future facility. But we want to get a younger one so that we can raise it up to be well socialized and um, tolerate handling well since they're known to be a little bit more of an aggressive species. But instead of a baby from a breeder, we'd rather offer a new home for one that just needs to be rehomed. So needless to say, We've been having a tough time finding a green anaconda that fits the bill, and we don't want to get a yellow anaconda because they don't get as big as greens. But I found one on Craigslist a couple days ago, and it just happens to be located on the other end of Wisconsin, which is where I'm at right now over the weekend for some programs. And it gets better, guys. The person who's rehoming this green anaconda also has a young black-headed python for rehoming as well, which is Ed's dream snake. And it's another snake that we wanted to have on display in the zoo as well. So guys, I think this was like meant to be. What Ed thinks he's doing is meeting me down here so that we can go film at the M Toxins lab tomorrow, which is true. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. But what he doesn't know is today we're going to go pick up a green anaconda and a black-headed python. <music> So, you know how uh, I said we had plans for tomorrow? Well, we have plans for today, too. Okay. Make sure it's recording. Yep. We're going to be picking up two snakes today. Two snakes? Yes. Guess what kind? I don't know anybody who down here who has who breeds snakes. It was on Craigslist. Ah. It's uh, something we've been looking for for a while. Something I've been looking for or something we've been looking for? Both of us for the facility. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is blackhead pythons, but I don't think that's it. That's one of them. Oh. Yep. And the other one's the same one? It's a different type. Or that's a... another one we've been looking for. What do we have a huge enclosure planned for? Oh, an anaconda? Yes. Really? Yes. Interesting. We're going to pick up a green anaconda and a blackheaded python. Oh, wow. Alrighty. Yeah. Yep. So that's where we're headed. Okay. Sounds good. We got them. We got the anaconda and the black-headed python, and they are both, both gorgeous. Thank you so much for meeting us. I don't think I, we caught his name. Did we catch his name? The email? I'll have to yeah. look in the emails. Thank you so much for these beautiful snakes. We have to get gas right now. Well, Ed doesn't ever need to get gas. He always has a plenty good supply so of that. Funny. Uh, we'll show you the snakes when we get back to the hotel. Well, we just got back to the hotel and it is pretty late. So I think we're going to show you just the green anaconda right now. And then we'll show you the black headed python when we get home, along with the other animals we also picked up on this trip that I purposely haven't told you about yet. But let's take out this green anaconda, which we are so excited about. Now he's probably going to bite me because he's an anaconda. I shouldn't be saying this so loud. Like I heard people walking. Okay, anyway, he's probably going to bite me because he's a green anaconda, but this is why we got a younger one. Oh man. All right, dude. Hi. Yeah, it didn't hurt. Yeah, he uh, already got Ed a little bit. Hi. No, nope, don't look at me like that, please. Aww. Oh, he is so pretty. Wow. Look at that. He's this gorgeous olive color. And this guy is about a year old. He just was being rehomed by his previous owner because the owner was going back to college and finishing up a nursing degree, which is awesome, and just couldn't keep some of his more exotic snakes, basically. I mean, it worked out perfectly because we've been wanting an anaconda for a while to put on display. And we also wanted a younger one so that we could work with it and socialize it so it's used to people as an adult. So I'd much rather have one bite me at this size than as a an 18 foot long adult basically he's doing really well actually it might be exposed skin that gets him yeah i'm purposely having i have my sleeves down so that he doesn't think that i'm food these guys just really like food that's really all there is to it no don't look into my uh, face i just let uh -oh. oh nope <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was close but yeah i love how their eyes are just like situated at the top of their head they remind me of the uh Indonesian sand boa or the Arabian sand boa. Oh yeah, the really derpy yeah. sand boas. And their heads kind of look like, I'm gonna trust you. <sighs> their heads kind of remind me of chubby frogs. Yeah, like, the with too. The stripe, with the stripe and everything. Their eyes. Yeah. Wow, 
He is so strong. Mm -hmm. Even as a young baby, he's strong. Yeah. And fun fact, for those of you who don't know, anacondas are technically a type of boa constrictor. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to put him back for now. And then when we get home, we'll show you the black-headed python. We'll probably take him out again because we have a very important subject that we want to talk about in this video with you guys. And of course, we're going to show you the other animals we got on this trip. So we'll see you when we're back home. Well, we are back home, so let's check out the black-headed python that we just got. This little girl is a year and a half old, and she may look a little bit small for, for her age. That's because she took a little while to start eating uh, regularly for the breeder. It, it took him like three or six months to finally get his babies eating regularly. So yeah, she is apparently a little feisty when you first get her out, which is another thing blackheadeds are kind of known for. But once she's out, she's apparently very well behaved. And it looks like she's doing really well right now. She's got a, a string on her face that I'm trying to get off. Oh, she's huffing at me. Oh, oh. I got it. I got it. I think it was a hair that was by your face. I'm Don't sorry. Don't you touch my oh, face. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are a little bit sassy still. I just love how these are like a woma python that you dipped their head in black ink. Like, that's exactly what they look like to me. But this one has some beautiful dark contrasting stripes or bands down her body and she is just gorgeous. So I'm hoping we can get her eating right away. Apparently she is eating well nowadays, so we'll just let her settle in here in her quarantine bin and then offer food and have her fingers crossed. Now she is still very little. She has a lot of growing to do. They generally grow to around six to eight feet long with some individuals growing closer to nine or even 10 feet long. So that's a little bit bigger than the Woma pythons that we have, which only grow to around five or six feet, give, give or take, of course. So she's going to be nice and big and a beautiful display animal at our facility. And we're planning on having her enclosure just above or below the Woma python enclosure at our zoo so that you can see all the different and we want to like color theme their enclosures to like the outback in Australia where they're native from So I can't wait to see her in her final habitat at our facility in the future Kind of a fun fact about the Woma pythons and black-headed pythons is that they are the only two species of pythons that don't have heat sensing pits on their lips and one theory as to why they don't have pits is because they are reptile eaters in the wild like they'll eat other reptiles or including snakes and searching for a cold-blooded animal with heat pits isn't really gonna work very well because the, the, the warmth of the, your prey item isn't gonna show up as well as it would like for a mammal. So that's one theory as to why they don't have heat pits, but we don't really know for sure. And then the last animals we got on this trip are actually two new species, and they are both amphibians. And since amphibians have semi-permeable skin, which means they can absorb liquids and chemicals from those liquids through their skin, I do want to make sure, and even the oils from our hands or any chemicals at all, I wanna make sure that my hands are rinsed off with the chlorinated water before taking these guys out. So the first one really quick is actually a native amphibian to our area. And we were looking for one of these cause we want like a Minnesota, Wisconsin native section of our facility. And then we were contacted by Aaron, who's one of our viewers who had to rehome his gray tree frog. And it was just perfect timing because he was unable to keep him anymore cause he found a new job. Congrats again on the new job, Aaron. And uh, he couldn't keep this guy. But he asked if we'd be interested in him, and this is native to our area. So it was just perfect timing because we were looking for one of these. This guy is so chunky. Oh my goodness, you are super cute. Ugh, look at Oh, he just like settled into my hand. He is just in a temporary setup right now, but we are actually going to film a video later today where we're gonna build him a bioactive, a big bioactive enclosure to house him in until we can move him to the zoo. Hi, you gonna jump on my face? You gonna jump on my hand? I don't know where you're going. Oh, there we go, that was adorable. Once a frog and really any animal is in captivity for so long, especially since she was kept over winter in captivity, you generally don't want to re-release that animal back into the wild because some don't adapt well and survive in the wild and those that do may have picked up immunities to certain diseases in captivity that they would then release into wild native populations. So with her, since she was brought into captivity and it was too late to release her in the winter, she had to stay in captivity and we didn't want to take one from the wild anyway, so this was really just a perfect situation for us. You are so cute. And the last animal we got on this trip was also from Erin, who gave us that frog. We got some Amazon milk frogs. So give me a second while I take one of these out. They are gorgeous. Look at this, guys. 
isn't this just a stunning frog? We weren't like even thinking about having these at our facility until Aaron asked if we'd be interested in these three. We have three females from him and each one is just beautiful. They have these blue toes, which I think is so cute. And they even have different personalities, he was telling me. And here's the third. Here are all three of our new Amazon milk frogs. They are, oh, I'm so excited to have these guys. Thank you again, Erin. These are a, as you can see, a rather large species of tree frog. And we think all three of these are females, or at least Erin thinks they are because he hasn't heard any of them chirping at all. So I think now we might be on the market for a male so that we can breed some of these and produce some captive bred specimens for the pet trade. These will be on display at our facility too, and we'll have like an educational sign with some fun facts about them and their range and their diet and fun stuff like that. And they're not a type of tree frog that's just gonna hide all the time either. So they'll be great to have on display because they'll be out in the open where people can see them. Sure, they don't pee on you. Yeah, they like me. They peed uh, all over Ed. Yeah, twice. Oh, like, you're so, look at their big feet. Yeah, I don't know. These guys are great at yeah. handling. Yeah. They don't pee at all. No, sure they don't. Aww. I got the pee all out of them. <sighs> and they're also, these are also on crickets. Easy to take care of. These three individuals are about two years old and this is about an adult size for them. Okay, so to wrap up this video, we would like to talk a little bit about Craigslist purchasing and selling. And I think for this, I'm going to have the green anaconda out because this will be a good training session for him. I'm going to have my sleeves down though because I really want to work on socializing him. Hey, buddy. By the way, we need name ideas for the green anaconda. So he's a male, so please give us some good name suggestions. But yeah, Craigslist or really any other selling platform uh, we want to talk about today, whether it's selling or buying from it. I mean, I'll just say Craigslist, but it'll apply to the other ones as well. First off, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. There's a lot of scams on Craigslist. So basically just don't get scammed. Ask questions. If you get any weird feelings or red flags, don't go through with the sale or the purchase for that matter. Make sure you meet in a public place to keep it as safe as possible. Ed and I once bought a uh, um, an archer fish actually on Craigslist, which is a brackish water fish when we had brackish fish back in the day. And we met up at a guy's house. We went inside and he was like, okay, the fish is in my basement. Ed and I were young and naive and we went in the house and we started following him down the stairs. And everything up to this point w seemed completely legit and totally fine. And we're going down these stairs thinking, we're gonna die. This is our mistake in life. We're gonna die right now. We're gonna be murdered. Not to mention it was a super sketchy house. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it was a really weird house. And then we had to go downstairs in the basement and oh, and we got to the bottom of the steps and we saw that there were fish tanks everywhere and we saw the archer fish and it was totally fine. It was just a weird situation. So that's what really opened our eyes to you gotta be careful when you're working with Craigslist. So meet in a public place whenever possible. Go with other people if you're meeting up in Craigslist. Always have your phone handy, all that fun stuff. This isn't to say that Craigslist is bad. It's the people sometimes who use Craigslist that are bad. Craigslist offers you a wonderful opportunity to either buy or sell an animal that might otherwise be released into the wild. So it's, it's gr a great opportunity to, to have and a good use resource to use. But that being said, just be careful and do the right thing when working on Craigslist. When it comes to buying a healthy animal on Craigslist, uh, I mean, sometimes you see the condition of the animal in the ad and you can tell it's not being taken care of. And if you're in a situation where you can take that animal in and maybe nurse it back to health, then that's great. But if you are looking for a healthy animal, then there are some precautions that you should take. First, make sure you ask for pictures, obviously, of the animal. The pictures not only will show you the condition of the animal that you're interested in, but if you look in the background of most of those pictures, you can kind of get a good idea of how that animal is being kept too. Like if you see a bearded dragon that looks healthy, but the enclosure in the background is filthy and maybe like a 10 gallon tank for an adult, then that kind of gives you an idea of what underlying health issues that bearded dragon might have. So keep all of that in mind as well when it comes to photos and be sure to ask 
questions. Ask tons of questions when you are buying off Craigslist because you don't know if that animal is sick or not. It might look healthy in the picture, but it might be hiding an underlying uh, illness. So ask whatever you can, basically. Get the age, get the sex of the animal, what it's eating, maybe its personality if you want something for its pet quality, why they're rehoming the animal, because that is sometimes a red flag. One of the biggest issues with Craigslist is getting scammed. I mean, I think we've all heard of people getting scammed off Craigslist before, but again, you can get some really amazing animals on Craigslist, so just make sure you do it correctly. So if there's a seller that says they have like a group of snakes really cheap, I mean, first off, again, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, but say they have a, a lot of ball pythons, like they're selling out their collection of ball pythons for really cheap, and you're interested in it, and they say, well, I'm located in Missouri, but the snakes are in North Dakota. If you're in Minnesota, uh, how about you just send me a check right now and I'll have a courier drop off the snakes at your house at a later date. Don't do it. It's those weird things when it comes to like weird payment options, like um, send, me, yeah, send me a money order and then we'll meet up don't do it! Like, make sure the exchange takes place at the same place and at the same time. And on the flip side, when you're selling animals, you again want to make sure that it's you're not getting scammed, so don't send out the animal before getting paid. And if you want to make sure your animal is going to a good home, you can ask questions too. You can vet uh, potential buyers by asking for a picture of their setup if your animal won't come with one. You can ask them their previous experience with similar animals or the same species. So it's really up to you to decide where your animal goes. Don't feel obligated to sell your animal or to buy an animal when you meet up because if you're meeting up and something seems wrong, don't do it. It's as simple as that. Don't feel obligated to go through with the sale. It doesn't hurt to have a conversation with a potential buyer or seller before you, the transaction takes place. Usually, I mean, if you're talking to another reptile owner, you can probably have a decent conversation about reptiles. But if that conversation goes in a way where you just feel uncomfortable about it, then you can honestly tell the person you're meeting with that eh, I just don't feel like this is the right situation for this animal or I don't feel like I'm the right home for this animal, but thank you for your time anyway. If you really don't want to use Craigslist, that's totally fine. I know a lot of people who don't like to use Craigslist. I've found that you can find potentially, sometimes better owners on Facebook groups specifically for the animal you're trying to sell. Because you know you have like on the bull snake Facebook group, you have a ton of bull snake lovers that are already a part of it. So that's a good uh, resource or um, platform to use for buying and selling too. I mean, Facebook's kind of weird about selling animals nowadays, but there's ways around it. And if you don't want to rehome your animal at all on an electronic or online platform, then there are usually rescues in just about every state that would be willing to take in an unwanted reptile or amphibian and place them in a new home on their own. So basically, don't release your pets into the wild. Find another route instead, whether it be rehoming them yourself or bringing them to a rescue. And when it comes to buying on Craigslist, just, again, use common sense about it. <laughs> I don't mean to, like, change the subject right away, but I've been noticing this guy is so heavy. This is solid, guys. Like, my arm is tired just holding him for these, like, 15 minutes we've been here filming. But he's doing really well. I just can't believe how thick he is. You want to weigh him? I have yeah. the scale out. Oh, perfect. Sure, let's weigh him. Should we see how much you weigh? By the way, I love how his eyes are not only on top, but they are like right near his nose. Because in the wild, they just stick their nose out of yep. the water and then their eyes can be out too. You are so derpy looking. Your face looks like a chubby frog. All right, so what we did, because this is a little small, we put his travel bin on there, teared it out so it's at zero. So now and we're gonna put him back there while we're setting up his quarantine bin. Ugh, buddy, I know you have to go back in your travel bin again. I'm sorry. All right, set him on. Twelve eighty-six. Wow, like thirteen hundred grams, dude. That's why you're so heavy. Two pounds, thirteen ounces. Oh my gosh, this snake, guys, weighs more than Cheyenne, our parrot. <laughs> she is only about. 900 grams if I remember correctly. So he is considerably heavier than our big parrot. 
Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video of our new exciting dream snakes, honestly, that we now have. I'm so excited. I can't believe how perfectly everything lined up for this weekend and that we were able to find these snakes. And we're offered these amazing frogs too. Let us know your name suggestions in the comments below. We need good name ideas, guys. We don't know what to name any of them, honestly. And of course, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. We love you guys. Thank you so much for your contributions. And everybody who's just watching, thank you for your time too. Let us also know which one of these animals was your favorite new acquisition of ours. Do you have a favorite at all or can you not pick? I mean, it's between the frogs and the blackheaded. Frogs and blackheaded? Like, I really like the anaconda, but you know, it's a That's little fair. small and yeah. it'll get well, bigger. And... For me then, it's between the frogs and the anaconda. You for you, the frogs and the blackheaded. blackheaded. Yep. Okay, that's fair. Those are our favorites from our pickups here today. So thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you next time.